Hello folks, Mirmex Munchkin back with an update video for Storm Priest, a cleric sorcerer multi-class character who focuses on the elemental powers of lightning and thunder damage to destroy his enemies. The core of the character is still the same, but things have changed since I first made him and uh, today I'd like to present a slightly different take on this character. Race and point buy are still the same, your half elf still needs at least 15 in strength to wear plate mail, charisma is his main spellcasting ability, but he will also need higher wisdom score to multi-class and use the cleric's features. This all means you have to dump dexterity and intelligence completely, while your constitution sits at 14 for the remainder of your career. This shouldn't cause too many issues though, because your armor class will be very high and you will have several options to dump very high damage both in close quarters and at range. And damage is what this character does very very well. At its very core are two levels of Tempest Cleric for that juicy destructive wrath channel divinity. Once per short rest, you will be able to deliver maximum damage to your enemies with your lightning and thunder damage spells. And you have plenty of spells to choose from. First one is called the like button, second one is subscribe, third one is a bell icon right next to it to thunderously echo throughout the YouTube algorithm. This of course will cause the perfect storm, pushing this video in front of hundreds of thousands of people desperately searching for ways to electrocute all the the scary monsters their dms throw their way and since you're watching this video you're obviously one of those people so make sure everybody else sees this video all right all right back to serious mode again chromatic orb is a tried and tested level one spell that you will of course want to use exclusively for lightning and thunder damage to synergize with the destructive wrath divinity you can double this already maximized damage by targeting two creatures with twin mana magic shatter is a dependable thunder damage area of effect damage spell while lightning bolt is there to deliver surgically precise lightning damage area of effect lines storm sphere fits the theme features and action economy of this character allowing you to use your bonus action more efficiently chain lightning is really the signature spell of this character combined with destructive wrath channel divinity you can multiply and scale its damage significantly every time you're fighting four or more enemies level seven and above spells don't offer much mechanical synergy and theme but you can still blast stuff with prismatic spray and meteor swarm, control enemies with powerful whirlwinds or simply cast wish and solve all the world's problems forever. Or, you know, cause even more trouble like it's usually the case with this most powerful spell in Dungeons and Dragons. However, spells aren't the only sources of thunder and lightning damage. You also have a devastating array of features and feats to further increase and augment their effectiveness. Besides the already mentioned destructive wrath channel divinity, Tempest Clare come equipped with a neat little reaction option called Wrath of the Storm that zaps enemies who dare to hit you with 2d8 lightning damage. The damage is very nice on lower levels, sadly you will be able to use this only twice per day because it's limited by your wisdom score modifier and it doesn't scale that well as you enter into tier 2 progression. That's where Sorcerer's Heart of the Storm feature picks up the load. The damage increase doesn't seem like much and you need to be very close to the enemies but what makes this feature very appealing is your very high armor class thanks to a combo of tempest clerics heavy armor and shield proficiencies paired with sorcerer's shield spell obviously this makes you much harder to hit and you can actually handle the risks of being in the front lines unlike most other sorcerers and if you ever manage to hit level 16 you will get a much better reaction option called storm's fury the damage of this feature equals your sorcerer level so it's 14 or more and you can even push the enemy decently far away from yourself. However, in order to deliver these big chunks of lightning and thunder damage, you have to remain conscious and above zero hit points. Even with armor class being super high for you, you're bound to get hurt and as a predominantly d6 hit die character, your hit points aren't exactly your strong suit. You need spells and features to ensure you stay in a fight as long as possible. Absorb elements comes to the rescue here, allowing you to cut all elemental damage coming your way in half. Clerics, bless and protection from your and good spells will serve you well when rolling a lot of saving throws or getting targeted by dangerous monsters. Misty Step or Mirror Image both serve the purpose of mitigating damage and avoiding enemies, though I'd probably take Mirror Image considering how you can use Tempestuous Magic feature from your Sorcerer to constantly control your positioning and distance relative to the enemies. Counterspell is a must on any character that has access to it, 
especially if you decide to pick subtle mana magic. Banishment competes for that concentration spot, but sometimes it's better to send a few enemies on a cooldown while you and your party take care of their buddies. Hold monster is always solid for doubling your paladins and fighters damage. Mass suggestion might go a bit against your preferences to fry everything in your path instead of engaging in negotiations, but the less enemies there are on the battlefield, the quicker and easier you can electrocute them to death. Whirlwind is a thematic choice that's also quite useful for controlling the battle flow, while Earthquake and Wish are there to shut down 99% of opposition that dares defy you. Obviously a lot of these spells require concentration. That's why you need to start in Sorcerer to get that constitution saving throw proficiency and grab the Warcaster feat at some point to maximize the odds of passing those saves after you inevitably take some damage. Shocking Grasp also synergizes nicely with the feat and overall theme of the character allowing you to zap the enemies trying to leave your reach. Now the reality of a spell blasting specialist like this one focusing mostly on lightning damage is that sooner or later you will encounter an enemy resistant to lightning damage. To avoid that, elemental adept feat comes in handy to both ignore the resistances and at the same time prevent super low damage rolls by turning all of those pesky ones into twos. I wouldn't really recommend taking elemental adept more than once though, your best spells are all dealing lightning damage, thunder damage is only reliable when you're dealing with monsters completely immune to lightning damage. To my knowledge only storm giants, three elementals and one monstrosity are completely immune to both lightning and thunder damage at the same time. Obviously your DM can make some homebrew monster that's immune to those damage types but that's neither here or there. This character might not be the best choice in Storm King's Thunder campaign if you ever even reach the end of that very very long campaign. In every other case you will be competently frying everyone and everything unless you decide to resist your murder hoboing urges for whatever reason. Your last two ability score improvements should go towards maxing out your charisma score and ensuring your spell save DCs are as high as possible. Now that we have most of the most important stuff out of the way, I'd like to touch on a particular playtest meta magic, the elemental spell from class feature variants Unearthed Arcana. I did a video about it, it will be linked somewhere in the video description if I don't forget about it. If I do forget about it, let me know in the comments so that I can fix that mistake. In essence, you can manipulate the elemental damage types of all of your spells. This means that your fireballs can be lightning or thunderballs, your cone of cold is basically cone of electric judgment, your firestorm is now a thunder or lightning storm, I mean you get the point right? All of your non lightning non thunder spells present on the sorcerer's list of spells can in fact be lightning and thunder spells if you have an awesome DM who will just let you break the game by changing the very nature of these spells in this way. I still don't get how killing enemies with cone of electric judgment turns them into icy sculptures but it's hilarious nonetheless. What's important is that if you do in fact have access and take the elemental meta magic, my advice would would be to swap shatter for scorching ray, lightning bolt for fireball, you can even swap storm sphere for vitriolic sphere even though I'd pr I would probably keep storm sphere because bonus action damage is very very neat, take cone of cold, maybe even immolation, definitely grab firestorm and incendiary cloud at higher levels and uh, well your meteor swarm can now do a ridiculous 120 lightning or thunder damage and on average 70 bludgeoning in a significant radius across several big area of effect spots. Another thing to consider is making your elemental adept feat geared towards thunder damage in this case because less monsters are immune and resistant to that damage type and it doesn't make any difference to you now that you can manipulate damage types on a whim and make all of your damage spells deal thunder damage. And if your overly generous DM wants to give you some items, Wand of Lightning Bolts and Staff of Thunder and Lightning both fit the theme and mechanics of this character perfectly. Pearl of Power makes sense too, you always need more slots, while Ring of Protection and Cloak of Protection are solid picks for improving your defenses. Magical Plate Mails and Shields with Armor Class bonuses are always needed, especially on this character, and if legendary items are on the table, Staff of the Magi is absolutely insanely awesome. With all of this in mind, what is the actual damage you can expect to do with this character? Well, the way I see it, it will work okay from level 1, but you do need at least 5 levels before you get a bare minimum of features and spells to start seeing it work its magic. Using one of your 2 level 3 spell slots, you can maximize the damage of either Shatter or Twin Chromatic Orb via your Destructive Wrath Channel Divinity, dealing a guaranteed minimum of half of 32 thunder damage in an area of effect, potentially hurting 3 or more enemies, or 40 light 
lightning or thunder damage to two targets if you hit with both of your chromatic orb attacks. If any of these enemies that you target with these spells attack you, you can Wrath of the Storm them for additional 2d8, basically 9 lightning damage on average. Your subsequent rounds won't deal as much damage as this, but if you're in that type of fight where as a level 5 character 200 or more damage done over the course of 3 to 4 rounds is still not enough, either the rest of the party is utterly incompetent or you're in some very very deep shit. Following the same approach, once you hit level 7, your lightning bolt cast with a level 4 spell slot would deal 54 lightning damage in a line, or if you're lobbing that lightning fireball with elemental meta magic, it deals the same amount of lightning damage in a larger area of effect. Personally, I wouldn't maximize storm sphere spell ever, but uh, once you cast it, its bonus action spell damage stacks with your main action spell damage and you can keep seriously hurting your enemies round after round. Once you hit high tier 3 or even tier 4 and start combining chain lightning spell with the destructive wrath and heart of the storm features you can theoretically deal 87 to 89 damage to each target of chain lightning spell and depending on the spell slot used dish out up to 623 lightning damage total which is absolutely bonkers. If you ever get to level 16, you can even deal a bit more damage with your Storm's Fury reaction to one of the targets, and at your peak power, if you're lucky to have a generous DM, your Meteor Swarm augmented and maximized with elemental spell meta magic and destructive wrath channel divinity can deal an insane 120 lightning or thunder damage and on average 70 bludgeoning damage for a total of 190 damage to potentially more than a dozen enemy creatures in a single round, totaling more than 2000 damage overall in that round. Progression wise, this character will definitely feel sucky on level 1 because your armor class will be basically 9 due to dump dexterity score, you won't have enough slots and you will only have 8 hit points. You could take mage armor instead of chromatic orb, but if you ask me, I'd say just suffer through that first level like every other d6 hit die schmuck wizard sorcerer out there. On the flip side, that constitution saving throw proficiency you grab as a level one sorcerer is a future investment for concentration spells and once you snag that first cleric level you can immediately buy yourself ring mail or chain mail and a shield so your armor class will be at least 16 probably 18 if you sell everything and earn enough to have 85 gold pieces by that point you then finish up the cleric progression you know you take the second level cleric and uh, get that destructive wrath channel divinity and then switch back to leveling sorcerer until the rest of your days obviously once you get 1.5 thousand gold pieces pieces, you buy plate mail, every extra point of armor class matters. Spell and meta magic choices are slightly different if elemental spell meta magic is on the table, that's kind of obvious, for reasons already covered earlier in this video. Either way, you will be thunderously electrocuting your murder hoboys tendencies one way or another, it's only a matter of how and at what cost to you and others. And these costs and concerns indirectly tie into the way you roleplay this character. I can easily see him being very, very evil, power tripping his frustrations and traumas from past events that maybe even triggered or infused him with these magical capabilities, or maybe a difficult childhood filled with these unexplainable nightmarish outbursts of sorcerer's magic you only recently managed to gain control over and decided to put to a more profitable use. For some reason I personally associate lightning damage with more sadistic torturous practices after all, electric chair was a method of death sentence not that long ago and uh, rods delivering electric shocks and other electric cruelties are still used to control or subdue unruly animals or even people in some parts of the world. Now, if you pick careful or subtle mana magic, for example, you can reflect that mechanical choice to a more caring and protective personality, shielding your friends and people who matter to you, in most cases this is your party mates, against the brunt of your magical nukes and blasts. Because let's be honest, sometimes it's just impossible to drop those big area of effect nukes without frying half of your party in the process delivering a lot of damage to them. All the tragedies and struggles of your childhood and your past can also be channeled and molded into a more benevolent virtuous personality. Some people get consumed by evil surrounding them but your electrifying presence cleanses your own soul and illuminates the darkness wherever you go. Having some level of self-restraint makes sense for this character as well, conserving that precious destructive wrath channel divinity which you can only use once per short rest is a strategic and tactical approach that easily reflects itself in a character that can be patient and pace himself appropriately both in and out of combat. Last but not least, 
let me know in the comments below how you envision this character's personality and role-playing flavor. I'm always interested to hear different perspectives. As you can see me scrolling through it on the screen, I updated the old word file with new information, went a bit more into detail about some things and did my best to clarify potentially confusing or contradicting information. If you would like to download this file, head on over to my Patreon page and pledge into the Magical Secrets tier. It's not mandatory, it's 100% optional, especially in these troubled, globally challenging economic times, but if you find your Patreon perks worth the trouble, worth your time and worth your money, consider supporting my efforts there. Also, good news, in the description below you will also find a link to a level 20 version of this character. I finally pulled the trigger and brought the damn legendary bundle on D&D Beyond. You can thank my Patreon supporters for that, they've been diligently throwing their hard-earned money and cash at me for months on end, so special shout out to all of my current patrons. Mike, Matthew, Ewing, Barley, Man, Hardly Trying, Rogor, Keller, and Suburban, Hell, Gary, Kors, Brad, Olham, Joel, Siel, Kazar, Sean, Manozzi, Stefano, Clea, Dequia, Devin, Yak, Alex, Bell, Harry, Howell, Crack Mask, Alexandre, Ode, Nicholas, Joseph, Francisco, Martinez, Kivan, Udell, 18, Russ, Helms, Primal, Vance, Boost, Ted, Rygaard, Stephen, Keezer, Derek, Peck, Barb, and Vernis, Posting, Devon, Troger, Sean, Walker, James, Arendo, Faisley, Schick, Edge, Walker, Jacob, Nether, Robin, Smith, Kyler, Beverly, Jacob, Salters, Paul, Gibbs, Wicked, Redstone, Thomas, Gardner, Charby, Burley, Bjorn, Christopher, Pistachio, Super, Neil, A.B. Coates, Neko, Devin, Adam, Howard, Nathaniel, Bisansini, Creepy, Chunky, Guy, Jesse, Bruffet, Tooth and Nail, Rules, Jacob, Metzger, Sterling, Garza, Jamie, Harris, Todd, John, Gamma, Paul, Spencer, Alec, Greenwood, Meher, Cute, Georgios, Chris, Otakis, Harley, Long, Edric, Iro Queen, Alex Duran, Elvis Yang, Play Puma, Maximus S, Anthony Vardoni, Tuxedo, Black and Shadows, John Bush, Ryan, and Javier Ray Brooks. Thank you for your continued support. I'll make sure you get many more videos like this one in the future, in the future, in the following weeks and months. And uh, with everything said and done, like, share, comment, subscribe. Min Max Munchkin out. Talk to you soon. <laughs>